Dracula. Novel by Bram Stoker. Chapter 6 Only the Beginning. The next few days were hard for Jack Seward. He was at the hospital all day, and at Hillingdon by night. Every morning a fresh box of garlic flowers arrived by special post from Holland. Seward did exactly as the professor showed him on the first night. He did not like it, because it seemed too unscientific. Dr. Seward was a very scientific man. But it seemed to succeed. The colour slowly returned to Lucy's face, and the wounds in her neck began to get better. But he was very tired at night. He was woken up many times by strange sounds from outside Lucy's window. At first he thought that a tree was moving against the glass in the wind. But the next day he realised that there was no tree near the window. He told himself. It was probably my imagination. Renfield was also making trouble. One day he suddenly attacked two men. He was walking in the garden with a guard when he noticed some men. They were driving a cart along the road from Carfax. The guard was just able to pull Renfield away. Dr. Seward decided to take the men's names and to give them some money. Early one evening, Seward was sitting in his office. He was reading the newspaper before he went over to Hillingdon. Tired from writing reports, he was falling asleep over a story about an escaped wolf. In his dreams the wolf was jumping in through the window when suddenly, the door crashed open. It was Renfield. He ran straight at Seward with a kitchen knife. Seward stood up and tried to keep the table between them, but Renfield was too quick. He pushed the knife into Seward's left arm. Angrily, Seward hit Renfield on the head with a heavy book from his desk. Renfield dropped the knife and fell, face down, onto the floor. Blood from the wound in Seward's arm fell onto the floor next to Renfield's face. The guards came into the room and lifted Renfield to his feet. He kicked wildly as they took him from the room. He screamed. Blood is life. I want more blood, give me your blood. But Seward wasn't listening. He only had eyes for Renfield's screaming mouth. I don't believe it. Seward thought. The madman's mouth is red. He drank. My blood as it fell to the floor. The man's sicker than I thought. Blood is life. I want more blood, give me your blood. Renfield screamed again, as they carried him from the room. And Seward, weak with pain and lost blood, fell to the floor. Seward sat up in bed, feeling very weak. Perhaps I've lost too much blood. He thought. He looked at his watch. It was ten o'clock and he wasn't at. Hillingdon with Lucy. Hillingdon? Impossible, my dear Sir Ward. He said with Dr. Hennessy, one of his assistants. You must stay in bed. Dr. Seward said. Tell Miss Lucy to do the usual things. He added, as Hennessy was leaving. She'll understand. Seward slept late the next morning. He was woken up by a boy with a special message from Amsterdam. Seward opened it and read. Be at Hillingdon tonight. Very important. Arriving early on 19th, Van Helsing. Oh no. That was last night. What does Van Helsing mean? Seward thought. He did not wait for breakfast, he drove straight to Hillingdon. It was still early. He did not want to wake Lucy or her mother, so he rang quietly. He hoped to bring a servant to the door. No answer. He rang again. Still no answer. He put his ear to the letter box. 
Everything was silent. He thought that Omething was wrong. He walked round the house, looking for an open window. Everything was carefully shut and locked. But then he came to Lucy's mother's room on the ground floor. Her window was broken and there was blood on the glass. In the flower bed below the window there were signs of an animal's feet. Seward thought. Perhaps they were made by a dog. Or even. He remembered the escaped wolf and shook his head. No, that's not possible. He told himself, feeling stupid. He stood up and looked around him. The house and garden were unnaturally quiet. He went down on his knees and looked at the signs in the earth more carefully. Suddenly he heard a sound on the path behind him. He jumped up, ready to defend himself. But it was only Van Helsing. In a few breathless words, he told the professor about Renfield and the message from Holland. Van Helsing said, I am afraid we are too late. He put his hand through the broken window and opened it. They climbed into Lucy's mother's bedroom. There, on the bed, lay Lucy and her mother. Great fear showed on Mrs. Westenra's face. Seward felt her hand. She was dead. Her other hand was holding tightly on to a ring of flowers. Seconds before dying, she probably reached out. For her daughter. Then she pulled the flowers from Lucy's neck. Lucy lay by her side. The wounds on her neck were wide open, and there were the signs of new bites. Van Helsing held her hand and placed his ear close to her chest. It's not too late. He cried at last. Quickly. Get some hot water and towels. We must keep her warm. When Dr. Seward ran through the dining room, he found all the servants on the floor. He smelled their breath. He thought. Something in their drink. Something sent them to sleep. Returning with a bowl of hot water and some towels, he told the professor about the servants. Van Helsing said impatiently. Go and wake them up. We need their help. And. Get Mr. Homewood. It is possible that Miss Lucy will die. He will want to be here. Because Lucy was so weak, Van Helsing did not want to wake her. He thought it was unwise to give her fresh blood. Dr. Seward watched her while she slept. Short, painful breaths escaped from her open mouth. Then he looked more carefully. There was something strange about her mouth. Her teeth seemed longer and sharper than usual. But minutes later, she opened her eyes and the color returned to her face. She was, again, the beautiful young girl he loved. Arthur was brave. He sat with Lucy all the time, and his face never showed. The sadness in his heart. Van Helsing later sent him to sleep in the sitting room. Seward stayed by Lucy's bed. At about six o'clock in the morning, Van Helsing came in and gave Seward a rest. He looked at Lucy's neck. As he looked, a strange, cold feeling passed over him. The skin on her neck was smooth and unbroken. He said to Seward, Look. The two red wounds have completely disappeared. Then, looking sadly up at Seward, he said, She is dying. It will not be long now. Wake that young man. He must be with her at the end. When Arthur came, Lucy opened her eyes. She said, in a low voice, Arthur, my love, kiss me. Arthur moved to kiss her, but Van Helsing stopped him. No, not yet. Just hold her hand. Lucy's eyes closed, and she seemed to sleep. Dr. Seward noticed again the strange changes to her face. 
the tight skin, the open mouth and the long, sharp teeth. Then, in a soft, sleepy voice, Lucy spoke again. Oh my Arthur, kiss me. As Arthur moved towards her, she opened her eyes. They were as hard as stone. Before Arthur could kiss her, Van Helsing roughly pulled him back. He shouted. Not for your life. Not for your living soul. An angry shadow passed across Lucy's face, and her sharp teeth closed. With a terrible metallic sound. Then a cloud of calmness came over her, and she was suddenly a pale, tired, dying girl. She tried to smile, but she was too weak. Van Helsing looked at Arthur. Now, my boy, take her hand in yours and kiss her now, but not on the mouth, and only once. Arthur kissed her, and Lucy's eyes closed. Her breaths became more difficult, and then they stopped, said Dr. Seward. It's finished. Van Helsing replied. No. I am afraid that this is only the beginning. Subscribe and like and share. See you in the next video.